Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is December 12th, 1938, and the title is Missing Pardon. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. Fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and the hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. United States, when gun law ruled the range and outlaws robbed and plundered the honest ranchers, the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for justice. Crime and criminals received no quarter from him, but the man who deserved a second chance always received one. The masked rider's courage was only exceeded by his sense of fair play. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeat to the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Hello, Silver. We're headed west to El Paso. Hello, Silver. Away. The Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, we're following the trail west of Northfield. Then suddenly a young man, hidden until then behind the spur of a hill, urged his horse across their path and... Oh, brother, you thinking, killer? Oh, 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 oh. Go ahead, draw, bless you. I won't do like you done to my brother. I'll give you a fair chance. Who are you? What are you talking about? I'm Vern Jackson. That's who I am. Thought I was safe in jail when you dry guts Walt, didn't you? Thought there wasn't anybody could make you pay for killing Walt, didn't you? Well, I'll just throw your hand away from that gun. Me get him. Wait, Tonto. Blast it. Why don't you draw? I broke jail just to get the chance to face you. I had to hide out from the law all the time I was hunting you. But I don't care whether the law finds me or not. Just so I can go back knowing I've paid you off. You're calling me a killer? That mask you're wearing. I suppose you think I don't know who you are, Mr. Lone Ranger. But listen. And I suppose you never figured anybody would find a mask you lost when you killed Walt. When it was laying right beside him. Even the law knows you're the killer. You're making a bad mistake. It was you done that. My own brother. Coming all the way from Bedford to see me. The first time in three years that we'd have been together and you shot him in the back. You low-down, rotten, yellow coyote. Slap left. I told you to keep your hand from that gun. You had your warning. Now I'll... What's wrong? Bless you. Oh, my gun. Cut from your hand. Oh, well, maybe you'll talk sense. I'll show you. Get out of that saddle. Come on, stand up to me. Stand back. You dry gulch and sidewinder. Take that. I told you. Yeah, let me go. My arm. Let go of my arm. Stand up and fight blast it. You'll accuse me of something I haven't done. Hold oh, still. If I could just get my hands on you. You've admitted you're an outlaw that you've broken jail. Now you're going back. Back to jail. I... So that's it. You're working with Jake Fowler. I might have known it. It was him framed me. Made the law think I was a thief. It was him tried to find out where my claim was. And you... 
You killed Walt so he couldn't file on it. It's as plain as can be. Just let me go. I'll show you. I'll kill you. Don't you struggle. You can't get away. If I could, I'd I want to know more about this. Why do you think I'm working with this Jake Fowler? Who he is? The frame-up you mentioned. Come on, talk. You mean to say you don't know all about it? I know nothing about it. Yeah, that's a good one. Jake frames me, then he hires you to do his killing without telling you what he gains by it. Go on. I'll bet he figured he could get you cheaper that way. Well, he's double-crossed you, then. Tell me, then. You bet I will. I'll tell you. I'll show you how he was cheating you. Then maybe you'll go gunning for him, and that'll leave me just you to deal with. How do you know Jake framed you? And what did he frame you for? I found out the same day I was jailed. The sheriff came to my place early in the morning. And it was the afternoon of that very same day that I heard Jake walking down the hall toward my cell. Howdy, Vern. <laughs> well, well. Who'd have thought to see a Jackson behind bars? He wasn't even near the flying W last night. Hmm, that's a funny thing. That cash missing, your hat laying in the yard, and a letter with your name read on it found right in the room where the cash had been hid. How do you explain them things? That was an old hat. Somebody stole them out of my cabin when I was prospecting. <laughs> yeah? And where would I want to steal cash? I told you fellas last night in the cafe that I'd struck it rich. Yeah, I recollect. Folks are saying you spread that story, so when you started spending the cash you planned to steal, there wouldn't be so many questions asked. I never stole nothing. Jake, you know I ain't a thief. Well, as a matter of fact, Vern, I don't really figure you are. Thank heaven somebody believes in me. Uh, what's more, maybe I could help get you out of here. Huh? Sure thing. That is, if it's worth enough to you. It's worth plenty. If I was free, then I'd have a chance to find out who framed me. Worth plenty, eh? Is it worth that claim you found? I'm beginning to see things straight. Jake, I got back from my prospecting trip last night too late to file a claim. Well, what about it? So I stopped in the cafe anyhow and told you fellas about my luck. I said I'd file my claim today. But before I could get to town this morning, the sheriff arrested me. Mm-hmm. That was sure tough luck. And now you come around with this proposition. Why, you poor cat, you stole that cash. You framed me. And you done it just so I couldn't file my claim. Just so you could get the gold for yourself. Hey, no. How did you know where to look for the cash unless you tap it where it was? And how would you know that unless you stole it yourself? And if I agree to your proposition, you'll just turn around and frame somebody else. Well, it's your word again mine. There ain't nobody else heard what I said. And I reckon the sheriff can't do nothing just on your say so. Get out. I'll stand trial if I have to, but you won't gain by this. Suit yourself. Go on, get out of here. Sure, I'll go. But think it over, Vern. Just decide what you'd rather have. That claim or your freedom. I've already decided. Well, after you've stood trial and the judge has passed sentence... You'll have plenty of time to change your mind. <laughs> and I'll be waiting. I ain't in no hurry. So just think it over. <laughs> and you stood trial, Vern? And got five years. All on account of that crooked partner of yours. Mister, how much did he pay you for killing Walt? You still don't believe I had nothing to do with his death? I'll shoot you the first chance I get. I'm giving you a fair warning. And you broke jail just to get me. It was my brother you killed. Do you think I shot him in the back without giving him a chance? What makes you believe I won't do the same to you? I don't know what you're planning. I'm just saying what I'll do if I get the chance. Very well. You think I'm guilty and you want revenge. I'll make terms with you. What terms? There's a cabin near Crow Creek. It's empty now. I know where it is. I'm taking three days in which to straighten up my affairs. And at the same hour, three days from now, you will meet your brother's murderer at that cabin. How do I know you'll show up? What's to prevent you bringing the law after me if you do? You'll have to take my word for that, that I'll be there. You have no choice. As to the law, you've said yourself that I'm wanted. You think I put myself into the sheriff's hands? Well, I Choose don't know. for yourself. But remember, I'm the one setting the conditions. You'll agree... Or we don't meet. And if I do? Then it'll be a fair duel. It'll be fought on even terms. It's a deal. Good. Now get out of here. In three days, mister. <laughs> and don't you forget. I'll be there. Get up. Get along. Why you do that? I intend to get to the bottom of this tavern. I don't think Vern's a thief. A thief hasn't the courage to attack two men single-handed. You got plans? I can't plan anything until I have more information. We're going back to camp. I'm putting on a disguise, then I'm riding to town. Huh? Let's go, Tonto. Come on, Get on, scout. When the Lone Ranger reached Northfield an hour later, he was so cleverly disguised that he attracted only the casual attention any stranger would have received. He entered the cafe, finding not only the sheriff, but Jake Fowler inside. He was present when a shout announced the arrival of a stage from the east, and... Stage is coming! He's hit town, folks! There will be something for you this time, sir. I'm hoping so. 
Any mail for me, Joe? Not a thing, Sheriff. You met the stage from Bedford? Yeah, sure did. And they asked to drive it just like you told me to, Sheriff. Said they want anything. As far as you recollected, there hadn't been either. That doggone funny. Sheriff? Huh? Oh, howdy, Jake. You looking for a letter from Bedford? Sounds like it, don't it? No, you needn't get wrong. Why shouldn't I? You've been nosing around for the last week trying to find out what that letter was about. Well, I just... Just thought... aim to poke your nose in my affairs. Well, I'll tell you why I've been looking for a letter, as long as you figure you got to know. I wrote to the governor. No, you don't mean... I mean I wrote him about Vern Jackson. I told the governor all the evidence was again Vern. That he was tried, found guilty, and given a sentence. And I told him that in spite of all that, I didn't figure Vern was guilty, and he ought to have a pardon. Are you local? Let's get a few things straight. First off, I'm sheriff, not you. And as long as I hold office... I'll run it in my own fashion. Mighty poor one. And in the second place, if I was you, I'd talk kind of small. Maybe some of the things Vern told me when he was in jail was true. Was he lying to you about me? He might have been lying. Fact is, I figured he was at first. But since then, I ain't been so sure. That's one reason I wrote what I did to the governor. And Jake, you take a hint. Talk small and walk straight. Or maybe I'll be asking some questions about you that you won't like. Mm, Sticking up for a crook. And accusing honest folks. You ain't been accused of nothing yet. Then see that you don't. Or maybe it'll be you that gets in trouble, not me. Remember that. <laughs> Can I speak to you, Sheriff? Oh, oh, howdy, stranger. What's on your mind? I couldn't help overhearing some of the things you said to Jake Fowler. Yeah? It sounded as though you thought Vern Jackson innocent. You a friend of his? Perhaps. Know where he is? Not at present, but I heard you say something about writing the governor for a pardon. Seems strange you haven't got an answer. How long ago did you write? It don't seem no funnier to you than it does to me, stranger. I wrote almost a week before Vern broke jail. All told, that makes it close to three weeks by now. A week before Vern escaped. It would take only about three days for a letter to reach Bedford by stage. That's just what it takes. I wondered what made you think Vern might not be guilty. Well, I'll tell you why. Stranger number that's always gone straight don't turn out law for no reason at all. You arrested him? I had to on account of the evidence. But there's another thing. Yes? I have known Vern since he was knee high to a grasshopper. I savvy the way he thinks, how he does things. I know all about where he hangs out and such. And after I jailed him, I searched every doggone place I could think of where he'd have been likely to hide that cash if he stole it. And I didn't find it nowhere. I see. And putting that together with what Vern told me about a conversation he had with a certain fellow from these parts, it's my belief he's no more a crook than a new wild lone ranger. Thanks for the information, Sheriff. Oh, hold up a second. Yes? Stranger, I, I ain't saying you know where Vern is hiding out. But if you should see him, if you should, I said, tell Vern I'm going to send the posse to scour the country for him. And you can tell him this, too. Well? Tell him that if he lets that posse find him, I'll tan his hide. <laughs> Leaving the sheriff, the Lone Ranger strolled toward the edge of town. But as he approached the spot where he had hidden his great horse, Silver, he became again the alert figure known as the Phantom Rider of the Plains. Nodding, he gave Silver a brief command. And soon the thundering hoofs of the great horse brought him to the camp where Tonto waited. Oh, Silver, oh, boy, oh. Oh, it did not take you long. I will dismount, Tonto. I have to ride. Where you go? I'm going to Bedford to the governor. The sheriff never received an answer to his request. But I'm wondering if the governor didn't send his answer with Vern's brother and not by stage. Maybe that's right. Jake Fowler wanted the claim Vern found for himself. He must have known that if Vern ever got a chance to speak to his brother, he'd tell him where he'd made his strike. And his brother would file a claim. Jake would have to prevent that. You think him kill Walt? He had a motive. Uh-huh. And how to, if I learn the governor sent the pardon with Walt, then we're going to trap Jake. Mm, that heap good. That's why I must ride to Bedford and see if the pardon was sent. While I'm gone, Kimasabi. Keep an eye on Vern without his knowing it. You can find his trail, can't you? Oh, Tonto, find it. And watch over him. And don't let him come to harm before we can act. Tonto, do that. Then I'm a sorry. Come on, old fellow. Hi, old Silver! Away! spent the greater part of the evening in the cafe in town. But finally, breaking away from his companions, he mounted and made his way to the tumble-down ranch house, where he had lived since its owners had moved out. Panther, observing him, patiently waited another half hour. 
then leaped into the saddle and raced toward the house. Get him up, Scout. There, place. Oh, Scout. Oh, oh, oh. Jake, get not in bed yet. Who's that? You open door. Look here, Injun. If you come to beg for grub, you can... There's afford... trouble. You, listen. Trouble? What do you mean, trouble? Law, fine color, name, burn. What's that? Find him, take him to jail. <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. So he didn't get away after all. Which him that ain't trouble. That's good news. People in town plenty angry him break jail. Maybe then get him and hang him. No. Huh? Him say, him want see you. Burn sent to here, Redskins? That's right. If them blasted fools hang the kid, it'd be just like him. Doggone, I can't let that happen. Burn say, get you. Maybe you help him. Is anything else? Did he say he's willing to come to terms? What you mean? No, I reckon he wouldn't talk about that to an engine. Well, Redskin, you get back to town and tell Vern I'm on my way there right now. Me wait ride with you. Right when you will. Get going and do like I said. But me too. Can you hear me? Clear out of here and follow. Uh, all right. Don't go. Oh. Don't hang around here either. Get on that horse of yours and start traveling. I'm watching you. Uh, get him up, Scott. Nah, can't spy on me. I'll get that part under the kindling in the box here. <laughs> Blame good place to hide it. After it's been in there, it'll look dirty enough to have been laying outside for a month. Tell the sheriff I found it caught in some shrubs. I can say my horse shied away from it, and I got down to see what it was. Ah, there she is. <laughs> now to get to town. Can't let them blasted fools in town wrench the kids. If they do that, I'll never get that gold. Steady there, fella. Get up. Get up, blaster. Get along there. See, Burn, Jake. Uh, that's what I want to do. They got him in town. That's where I'm headed. You're from. headed for my camp. But I You'll can't. stay with me tonight. And in the morning, Jake, you're keeping an appointment I made for you almost three days ago. Now, don't try to break away. Come on, Silver. the masked man and Tonto guarded their sullen prisoner. Then in the morning, they took to the saddle and rode toward the cabin at Crow Creek. There they drew their horses to a halt beyond the earshot of the cabin. Oh, sir. Oh, 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 oh. Get down, Jake. Blast you. You're covered. Stand right there. Tonto. Uh, have you that mask? Huh? Here. Here, mask. And put it on him. Uh, Tonto, do that. Yeah. What's that for that mask! Jig, you're going to get paid back for trying to fix a murder on me. But I... You left a mask like mine near Wolf's body. Now, you're going to wear that same kind of mask to meet the brother of the man you killed. No, you can't do that. But you... I am. Is the mask on tight, Tom? No, it's not come loose. Good. I have an idea Jake's going to get some rough treatment, and I don't want that mask to come off too soon. What are you going to do to me? I told you last night you were keeping an appointment I made for you three days ago. But I... That appointment is with Vern Jackson. You see that cabin in the clearing over there? Uh, I see it. Vern should be inside there right now. He, he'll kill me. He'll see this mask. He won't give me a chance. What kind of a chance did you give his brother? Let me go. I don't want to die. Please let me go. I'll tell the sheriff what I've done, but but I don't want to die this way. You're going in that cabin. Then give me a gun. You're going in unarmed. No, no. It's the same as murder. I don't know. I'll be watching you all the time, Jake. If you take off that mask, if you try to explain to Vern, we'll deal with you. You can't do this to me. Please. Now I... get going. Walk straight to the cabin. When you get there, open the door and walk inside. If Vern isn't there, wait for him. I... And at the first attempt to make a break for it, we'll shoot. Please. Hurry. Or do we shoot now? No. No, I... I go. All right. 
On your way. But it's the same as murder, I tell you. The same as murder. You think Vern shoot him? No, Tyler. Vern isn't that kind. Even the day he first met us, he gave me a chance to draw. And he isn't a killer. He wouldn't shoot down an unarmed man. No. But Jake doesn't know that. Right now, he's being punished by his own cowardice. And he deserves every bit of the agony he's going through. Mm -hmm. Him plenty bad fella. We will play safe, Tyler. Just as soon as Jake gets close to the door, we'll follow. We can watch through the window. If Laverne does try to shoot, we'll stop him. They don't want to die. The door. The burns inside. If I don't go in, the masked fellow will shoot me. I ain't got no choice, no chance. So there you are. You did show up. Now get inside. Don't shoot me. Well, I'll be... Why, you yellow skunk? Why'd you shoot me? I can't explain. Now, but... Play to me. Now, listen, you I... You poor cat. You left your gun behind because you knew I couldn't drill you without giving you a chance. Let You're here to beg off. You come sneaking in here without a gun, hoping to get out of it. No. I suppose you figured I'd listen to you. Then you wouldn't have to worry about me hunting you out again. Well, it won't work. You don't savvy. It ain't the way you think at all. Shut up. I'll show you. I don't need a gun. I'll handle you with my bare hands. You don't hit me. Yeah. There's my shooting iron on the floor. Out of the way. Oh, now we're even. And now I'm going to give you the beating of your life. Stay away. Of all the sniffing and yellow skunks. Maybe this will make you fight. Oh. And this. Oh, my eye. Fight, blast you. Fight me. Ain't you got no nerve at all? Why, you ain't got no more backbone than a snake. The mask man. The fellow everybody talks about. And even a scared to fight with fists. He, he didn't say I couldn't fight back. What's that you're saying? Hit me. Uh, so you are going to fight. Well, that's just fine. I'll show you. Put down that chair. Uh, you missed. And here's something for you. Uh, this should fix you. Uh, I give up. I've had enough. Don't hit me again. Get up here. Let go. I'm tearing off that mask. Mister, I'm going to be the first man to see who's behind that mask of yours. No. Now then. What? Jake. Jake Fowler. Listen, Vern. You. Vern, I ain't the real mask, brother. Honest, I ain't. One moment. What in blazes? Vern. Fucking Jake, hip pocket. But you. What did I say? There's nothing here. I have A paper. But what's Open it? Open it and look at it. A pardon. A pardon for me from the governor. The pardon he sent with your brother. The pardon Jake stole and kept after he'd murdered your brother. Uh, I don't savvy this. I can tell you exactly what happened. Jake killed your brother so you couldn't tell him where your claim was. Then he found the pardon and kept it. But how do I know that's true? The governor can tell you the pardon was sent. He can tell you I checked with him. What's more, here's a second pardon. He gave me that to use in case Jake had destroyed the first for some reason. Mister, you went to see the governor just to help me out? To help you and bring a murderer to justice. The second pardon will prove my story. The date shows it was issued after I spoke to you. Tonto and I tricked Jake into getting the first one from the place he'd hid it. And that pins your brother's murder on him. Only Walt's killer could have had that paper. I didn't mean to kill him. Just wound him was all. You skunk. We leave you to take him to jail, Vern. You can handle them all right. You just bet I can. No, not jail. I'll be hung. Maybe they lynched me. If they lynch you, it ain't no more than you got coming. You killed Walt and framed me. And if it hadn't been for the mask fella, maybe you'd have got my claim besides. Now get going for town. If you're going to be hung, I want to be the one that puts a rope around your neck. Come on, kill the old fellow. There's justice to be done. Someone's waiting for us on the trail ahead. I'll see you over! Away! <laughs>
have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.